I would have made a lot of money if I had been learning about crypto during DeFi summer, which is what we call the summer of 2020, where a lot of new projects launched and gas fees weren't as bad. Instead, I was off learning about SEO, designing the interior of a house, and taking motorcycle trips. Nevertheless, we all may get a second chance. Oh, by the way, stick around to the end of this video as we have a special guest who's actually another crypto YouTuber creating and sharing experiments on his own channel, some of which include big DeFi 2.0 projects. Welcome to Whiteboard Crypto, the number one YouTube channel for crypto education, and here we explain topics of the cryptocurrency world using analogies, stories, and examples so that you can easily understand them. In this video, we are going to explain what DeFi 2.0 is, why it's even a thing, and how you could utilize the beginning of it to earn some very delicious rates. Let's dig in. So first off, we as humans love to categorize things. We love making things black and white, or putting everything into a neat category so that we can actually wrap our minds around it. And that's exactly what was happening with Web 1.0, Web 2.0, and Web 3.0, and even DeFi 2.0. We were basically just bundling up ideas and collectively calling them something so it's easier to refer to them. With that in mind, let's move on, considering that DeFi 2.0 isn't some magical term that's just going to make you a bunch of money, but instead simply a name to categorize a new idea currently happening in the world of decentralized finance. Here at Whiteboard Crypto, we recently posted a poll about why our viewers enjoy watching our videos, and the answers pointed to the fact that we explain things really well. That means it is our job to make this as simple as possible. Now continuing with this humble brag, <laughs> liquidity is the amount of money available for trading. Let's use the example of a pawn shop. You're going to a pawn shop to buy a TV, and you look around and you see there's only five different TVs. This means that the pawn shop has five TVs liquid, or that their liquidity is five TVs. They can only sell you a maximum five TVs. Now you might be wondering why it matters how many TVs he has if you only want to buy one. Imagine if he had 5,000 TVs. He simply has a lot more supply with the same amount of demand. However, if he had only one TV, he could charge a lot more for it because the demand would be the same but the supply would be a lot lower. When it comes to cryptocurrencies, this liquidity number is really important because of where we actually go to buy crypto. And I'm not talking about Coinbase or Binance or the big companies that sell you crypto, although their liquidity definitely matters too. But for DeFi 2.0, I'm specifically referring to the liquidity that decentralized exchanges or DEXs like Uniswap or PancakeSwap have. These applications use a specific algorithm called a constant product automated market maker, which sounds really complicated, but if you've made it this far in the video, you'll understand our explainer video on those topics too. So check the links in the description if you want. These DEXs only have liquidity if people give it to them. So basically, you can only go to PancakeSwap and actually buy SafeMoon if someone else has come along and actually given PancakeSwap their SafeMoon for you to trade with. Now a little technicality here, the people who actually give PancakeSwap their tokens technically give two tokens in a pair, like SafeMoon and then USDC. And they do this because they can earn a small fee that traders pay to actually make trades between these two tokens. So all day long, traders come to PancakeSwap and trade SafeMoon for USDC, and then other traders trade USDC for SafeMoon, but they're using the liquidity that someone else provided. Now, here's why it's important. If there isn't much liquidity, the price is very volatile. I'm talking like if there's only $10,000 worth of liquidity, or $10,000 worth of the tokens provided to the exchange, a whale could easily come along and 10x the price with not much money. However, if there are millions of dollars in liquidity, a whale can't really affect the price much, and it takes large moves to start affecting the price simply because there's more liquidity in the pool. Now, hopefully you understood that, but if you don't, click the subscribe button, because soon we're going to be releasing a video explaining how liquidity is even more important than market cap when it comes to cryptocurrencies, and that video might fill in some gaps. Next up, what is liquidity mining? So a big part of DeFi 1.0, or the old system, was that to incentivize people to actually provide their tokens to a place like PancakeSwap or Uniswap, someone would give them extra money so that this way they could earn a small percentage on the trades automatically, but then they would earn even more due to these incentives. Now these incentives are currently referred to as farming rewards or even liquidity mining. The purpose of this was to increase the liquidity so that there would be more money for the traders to trade with, affecting the price less and making the price not as volatile. But there's a problem. 
Where'd the extra money come from? Well, the incentive is usually paid out in the token that you're actually supplying to, meaning that you would provide the token and then earn it. Well, technically, this means it is very inflationary since they're giving out a bunch of tokens to a bunch of other people, and usually what would happen is that other people would earn it and then sell it, causing that specific token's price to drop. It also meant that when the extra rewards ran out, nobody would stick around because, well, they came for the money. Now, the solution is simple. It's for a protocol to own its own liquidity, instead of trying to incentivize other people to provide liquidity. And that's exactly what Olympus DAO is attempting to achieve. So as a recap, DeFi 1.0 is characterized by a bunch of crypto protocols that rely on other crypto users providing their tokens as liquidity for other people to trade with. Now this is okay for a while, but it does have some downfalls. For example, if someone sells their share of a large majority of the liquidity pool, effectively reducing that token's overall liquidity, the token suddenly becomes much more volatile and can be affected by whales. As another downside, users who provide their tokens can experience something called impermanent loss which is basically a complicated way of saying that they have a risk of losing money without an even amount of upside. The solution is that instead of having users provide their liquidity and taking on these risks, that the protocol itself actually provides liquidity, or at least it buys the liquidity back from the users. To put it simply, a protocol can own its own liquidity. This way, a whale can sell out their portion of a liquidity pool and cause the price to become volatile. And, in the case of Olympus DAO, a new version of a stablecoin that's actually backed by a protocol's own funds is created. Changes long-term to the protocol can be decided upon by members of a DAO. Now, a DAO is a crypto term for an organization where members who hold the token get to propose and eventually vote on the changes that happen. The more tokens you hold, the more votes you get. Anyways, this idea of a protocol owning its own liquidity is the main idea of DeFi 2.0 and has actually caused many new projects similar to Olympus DAO to be formed. And with that popularity, these projects are able to offer crazy interest rates, of which they've actually been able to hold for a decent amount of time. Now, if you want to go down this rabbit hole of how Olympus actually owns its own liquidity, soon we'll be releasing a whole video on the specific Olympus protocol, but until then, let's get into how much money you can actually make from using it. Now, for this next section, Jesse is going to be explaining his experiments with some DeFi 2.0 projects, including Olympus DAO and Time Wonderland. So obviously these improvements are supposed to allow protocols like Olympus DAO to function more efficiently in theory, but how does it actually work in reality? Well, with something like Olympus DAO, which has only been around since April of this year, in just seven short months, they've been able to accumulate over $670 million in treasury assets. That's not the market cap. That's not how much money has been invested in Olympus. That's how much cold, hard cash they have sitting in excess, just ready to be spent. And the way that something like Olympus works is that this excess cash gets paid out to stakers like you and me, which is how they have such a high APY. But how much money can you actually make staking on a project like this? I've actually done experiments on two different DeFi 2.0 platforms. The first one is Olympus DAO, and the second one is a fork of Olympus DAO called Time Wonderland. On Olympus, I started with an initial investment of $5,000, and after just nine days, I was able to bring in $1,900. After that, I decided to add in money and I increased my total stake to $17,132. And over the next one week and three days, I was able to make $3,362 just from staking on Olympus. And today it's been one month and 10 days since my initial investment. And my $17,132 initial stake today is worth $27,000. $274. That's a pretty awesome result from just one month of staking. On Time Wonderland, I staked a little bit less. I staked $2,000. And over the first five days, I was able to make $440, which might kind of seem like a smaller number compared to the numbers I was just throwing out. But at that rate, if it continues for the entire month, I'll more than double my initial stake. Now, obviously me getting good results doesn't mean that these protocols are without risks. They definitely have plenty of different risks. It does seem that they figured out a very efficient process for generating income and rewarding that income to stakers. But I guess we'll continue to see how the space evolves from here. We want to give a special thanks to Jesse, not for helping to create this video, but for helping to create other amazing educational videos on his own channel. We at Whiteboard Crypto are excited about anything with the word education and crypto in it, and Jesse seems to be capitalizing on that, basically testing out new DeFi applications and then sharing his experiments with the world. 
We highly recommend to head over onto his channel and watch a few videos. They're edited amazingly well, and from one YouTuber to another, we appreciate your work, Jesse. Ending this video, I think that about wraps it up. As always, we hope you enjoyed this video, we really hope you learned something, and most of all, we hope to see you in our next video.